Dennis Wrigley Ministries, a better way. Unity, renewal and healing. Probably the most unpopular word in the Bible, three letters, is sin. Why is it unpopular? Well, primarily because uh, a lot of uh, secularists now say there's no such thing. It doesn't exist. They dispatch it to a theological waste paper basket. But what is sin? How can we really define it? And the only way we can define it is by going to the Bible. And the Bible uh, says very clearly in the book of James, uh, chapter 4, verse 17, whoever knows what is right to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. Ah, says the uh, atheist or the agnostic or the postmodernist or any of the other people around these days. Ah, but how do you know what is right and wrong? Is there any such thing as right or wrong? And they're carrying on that debate right now. They're not sure what is good or bad. They can't see much distinction. They're not sure what is right or wrong. They can't see much uh, distinction. They can't see much distinction between what is real and what is unreal. That is the confusion of our day and age. But the Bible is quite clear. God laid, laid down laws for morality to the Jews, and the laws made sense, and they worked, and they were of the opinion that if they kept to those laws, they would not sin. Because uh, we find in, in the first letter to John, chapter 3, verse 4, everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. In other words, breaking the law of God. And in our culture today, there's a great danger in just labeling something evil. We knew when we saw those horrendous photographs of the concentration camps that this was thoroughly evil. We know that when children die on battlefields, this is evil. We know that bad things happen which we can label evil. But there is a distinction because when we sin, we're not just making a mistake. It's not just an error, as we're led to believe by so many today. No, it's a deliberate act. A sin is to break the law of God. The sin is to turn away from God, to reject God. Sin is to disconnect from God. Sin is in the last analysis, disobedience, and it's real. Now, however people define it, it is real. Because when people sin, sooner or later, they experience guilt. And the burden of guilt is very, very heavy indeed, as we see in our society today. So, with 1 John 1 verse 8, we can say, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Ah, you may say, well, we're all in the same boat. Yes, precisely. In the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, it reads, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, all of us. Now, sin is destructive. Uh, and if it is not dealt with, 
It destroys us. And the message of the cross of Christ is the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The consequence of sin is death. This is what the message of the cross is about. Jesus took on board all the sin of the world. And it did not destroy him. He overcame it. And therefore, if we can recognize that there is a way through sin, around sin, over sin, whether we're believers or not initially, if we see a way, then we will be led to the point where we are set free from its power. Now, its power is like a heavy chain on our limbs. Jesus put it this way in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 34, 36. I'm giving you these scriptural references so you can follow them up. Jesus said, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Today, over and over again, in the Maranatha community, we're meeting people whose lives have been an absolute mess, who have been so crushed by the wrong things they've said and done deliberately, that they've felt in need of being cleansed, like a, a cold shower to wash away all the filth. And so I meet regularly large numbers of former drug addicts, <laughs> former bank robbers, all kinds of people whose lives have been in a mess, who can say now, sin has no dominion over me. I have been set free. I have been forgiven by God in Christ. And that's exactly what we read in the letter to Romans, chapter 6, verse 14. Sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What does that mean? In a nutshell, it means that you do these things because you want to do them. You live a life to please God. You begin not to be ruled by um, what happens if you do this or don't do that. Uh, the, the rod of iron which is ready to beat you. It means that you begin to love the God who gives you the laws. Let's just see how Jesus took two commandments and brought them together um, from the Old Testament. He said in Mark chapter 12 verse 29, he said, the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these says Jesus. So, how do we deal with sin? We take these very words that Christ has given, quoting from the law in the Old Testament, and we say, yes, I will love the Lord with all my heart. That's my emotions. I will love the Lord with all my soul, my innermost being. I will love the Lord with all my mind, my intellect, and with all my strength, my body, my whole life. Then I will experience freedom from sin. Then I can become 
a new creation. And when men and women, by the thousand, love God like this, the result is a changed world, a transformed humanity. Dennis Wrigley Ministries, a better way, unity, renewal, and healing. Thank you for watching.